Hey everyone, welcome back to Painted. We had some weird camera issues yesterday and everything seemed very, 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 very zoomed in. So I'm wondering if it was an issue of turning the camera the wrong way and Facebook doesn't like that. Facebook has its moments. Um, so we're trying it in the vertical filming today and hopefully that'll go better. And we're going to do all kinds of fun things. Hey Diane, nice to see you. We're gonna follow up on yesterday's crackles to see how they all turned out. We're gonna glaze them so we can enhance the details. And then I'm going to show you some of my crackle failures because I played with crackle all day today. And yeah, I had some big old bombs. So let me open up my iPad so I can more easily read your comments. Hang on a second. And this always takes a moment. Just forgive me for it. Um, you cannot open these lives um, until they're actually going. So I cannot put them up on my iPad until I'm actually showing up on Facebook. Yay! Now, there I am. Make sure the volume's down so I don't have to hear myself. Awesome, I got that up there. And let's see, yeah, I can see all the comments and I'm gonna angle the cameras down as we go through. So yesterday we played with uh, the Crystal Clear Artsyville Crackle and we played with the Urban Crackle. Urban Crackle is more of a plaster-like material and the Crystal Clear is liquid and is exactly what it says. Hey Pam, nice to see you. Yeah, I can actually, with the camera up and I can actually see your comments. So we put on here a coating on this old board. I used a lot of my old samples that I didn't need and I put stuff over there to see what kind of reactions we have. So on this board, you can see the pattern in the background. I put a thin rolled on coating of the crackle and then I trailed on a very thin coating of the urban crackle. And you can see, if I hold it up close, that where it's thicker, it cracked better. And up close, if you look, you can see very, very, very fine cracks in this haze part here. Um, so I'm going to move a whole lot of stuff out of the way because I have so much stuff sitting around to show you today. Yay! I'm gonna create a glaze. We're using our Artsyville glaze. I'm gonna put a little Faux effects asphaltum transoxide in there. Um, and everybody asks me this, how, do, how much colorant do I put in until I'm happy with it? That's pretty much it. Uh, let me go zip over here. Uh, sorry, I can't reach my stir sticks. I had to get a bunch. And I stir it. Um, sometimes I want a very sheer glaze sometimes I want a really dark one. Now this I can already tell is sheer because it's very light, but really what I, the easiest way to do is have a white piece of paper or a white plastic on your tables like I have here, and I do this. And I can see right here that that is nowhere near dark enough. So I'm gonna add a little more asphaltum transoxide. Um, I think I'm gonna add a little asphaltum I'm sorry, uh, Transoxide Plain Brown from Faux Effects. And then, just to jazz things up, I'm going to add, that's the wrong one, our primary elements, Cinnamon Brown, which is a very, very red brown. It doesn't doesn't look like that in there. But once these pigments hit liquid, their color blooms. And I've used about an eighth of a teaspoon in there because I'm just changing the color. And if you look in there, you can see the pigment sort of floating on top. But if you look really close, I don't know if I can get this in the camera, you can already see that powdered pigment starting to bloom a little. And I'm just gonna mix it all in together. That might also add just a little hint of metallic to this um, because these are mica-based pigments and I carry these. This is one of our, my favorite products. You can add it to any water-based paint product and it will tint it, although I don't recommend adding it to plasters because there is metallics in it, so why would you want those to disappear? 
Okay, I'm coming in for cheese pop and a brush. I've been jamming all the way up to doing a live, so forgive me for not having everything right in front of me this very second. So I'm brushing this on and it's pushing, I'm pushing it down into the recesses of the cracks. And this will give you an idea of how each area took the adhesive, the crackle size and the product that, uh, the urban crackle that we put over it. Now I could, I can wipe it back like I just did in one spot. I can brush it on like this. Put a little more on there because it's, the Urban Crackle likes to suck in the glaze. And I can take one of my badger brushes. And for those who are not familiar, a badger brush is uh, a brush designed to create and soften glaze. And you don't take your badger and flop it like that. You take your badger and move it gently, straight, circular, soft motions you know, I'm not putting a lot of pressure here because I don't want my bristle marks to show. I'm just manipulating the glaze to soften it. And once this glaze dries, I'll probably see the crack a little better, but looking at it here, and I got a little spot with no glaze here. see if you look up close the places that had the most urban crackle product over the glaze got the heaviest crackle up close the fine crackles almost impossible to see on here this was the one everybody was asking about yesterday this is the one where I put the urban crackle over the wood grain texture that I had put on not the clear one with the foils that you all saw yesterday. This is the wood grain one. This is so cool. I love how this one came out. Very crackly. You can still see it's very barky textured. So I'm going to take some of this and rub it in. I still don't think that's dark enough. I'm going to put a little more transoxide colorant in that. And yes, I'm mixing with my brush. Don't, don't crucify me for that. It's just the brush was in the container. So I'm going to mix some of this on here. And you can apply your glaze in a lot of ways. And you see mine's really, really, really messy right now. And then I'm going to take some of this weird glaze mixture that I made yesterday and dip my brush in and smear some of it on. Why? Because I want a little variation in color. Again, I can cheesecloth it back. I can soften it with the cheesecloth. And you can see I'm pouncing and softening. And I really, oh, I like this. Oh, I get so excited when something's going just the way I hoped it would. If I wanted to, I could glaze several layers on here. And again, I still would, pro I might darken this up a little more just to, because it's it was so white. Otherwise I would have pigment uh, tinted my urban crackle to soften the whiteness of it. I probably would have turned it more brownish. And really part of what I'm doing here is I don't want to see a whole lot of distinct lines between this color and this color. So sometimes you have to go back in and blend a little more color. I 
and see that becomes way, way, way more interesting even than just the plain crackle. And you can still see the barky texture through it. I can still see my wood graining swirls. It makes a terrific tree bark finish. I'm gonna be throwing boards on the floor. You're just gonna have to live with it. This is, you might, might remember if you saw yesterday's video, this is how it finally, this board that I did the Urban Crackle on, you can see where the Urban Crackle is heavier, the islands are bigger. Where I put it on thinner, the whole crackle effect is much finer. I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch me glaze that. This is the one from yesterday that everybody went oohs and ahs on. This is finally cured. And I got asked this yesterday in questions. Um, do I worry about this cracking off? Once this dries, it is completely stable. It does not chip off. You don't have any weird things happening. You don't have to worry about brushing by it and having it be unstable. That's very cool. Thank you, Varet. I think this, these looks are so cool. This is such a great bark technique. And it's so, so simple. And the other one you all wanted to know about was this one. The one that I put the roller through, the lotus roller. Well, darn, didn't that turn out gorgeous. Gorgeous, I'm so thrilled with that. Oh, I love that. I haven't decided how I'm glazing it, so I'm not gonna glaze it now. Now, this is one of the ones that I did and I put the crystal clear crackle over it. Now I warned everybody that because this had texture, we could get a little bit of a rough reaction from it. It might not get as nice and cracked. And I was right. Um, I probably should have sealed this with set coat clear to smooth it out, but what I actually what the, the size did uh, the crackle size did is kind of pop the grain a little bit through the stain. So I'm going to put a little glaze on here and wipe it back and see exactly how much and I'm I'm going back and forth between the two glazes because I don't want it to, I don't want to lose all this blue, but I don't want the blue to go so be something that you don't see the crackles because I've made it too close to the blue that's already on there. So this I'm just smearing everything all over. And don't go too crazy applying glaze because half the time you're wiping it back off. And so if you apply really thick glaze, and then wipe really thick glaze off, you're just throwing away all that product you applied. So here's this one. Let me wipe it back. Let's see what I can see out of the crackle. Yeah, it's, I don't think this is even gonna show on camera because it is so fine. It's almost impossible to see. This was not what I would consider a success board. I will try it again and see if I can make it a success board. All right, this was the other one that we rolled texture through the cracking. And I'm gonna do a quick glaze on this so you can see how the texture really shows in the clear because this came out really super sweet. glaze the whole surface and I can see it it's a very fine glaze or I should say it's a very fine crackle and work better in a few some spots than in others but it gives you the idea some Crackle is one of those things, you gotta kinda play with it to get it down solid. Some things are like automatic hits, like they worked perfectly. Some of them, not so much. So if you look in this corner right here, you can see the textures of the roller 
and then the fine crackle in it. Quite frankly, this is an ugly ass color combination, so that will go in a different place and I might remake it. Now, the other question I got asked a lot is what if I want to crack something that isn't crackled? Well, with the Artsyville products, and I just did a test all day today, so I mixed, I, I rolled on the size, and I mixed all of these other products with some of the crystal clear crackle. So let me, let me show you what happens. Okay, I mixed metallic plaster, I put on a coat, I took this board, I rolled on a coat of the crackle size, some of it I troweled on the metallic plaster that I had tinted just so I can see it clearly. And some of it I mixed some of the crystal clear crackle into the metallic plaster to see if that would aid the cracking. You know what happened? Nothing. Doesn't work. So I'm making this mistake so you don't have to. So yeah, that was a bomb. Then I tried it with paint. I rolled the size on, I tried it with plain paint, and then I mixed some of the crystal clear crackle into the paint to see if it would happen. You know what happened? Nothing! Don't waste your, your paint and your crackle. It was a flop. Haven't figured out a way to make those plasters and paints crackle yet. I even tried it with the bead gel. I mixed a little glitter into the bead gel, a little mica flake, because I wanted to make it super pretty and sparkly. I tried one side with bead gel just troweled onto the crackle uh, medium, or crackle size, and I tried the other side where I mixed some of the crystal clear crackle into the bead gel, and once again, nothing happens. So, if I can find a way to make other products crack, I promise you I will let you know, but that was not the way to do it. Now we have some other boards prepped because we're going to show you some other fun ideas that I came up with while I was working today. And I got to reach over for them because I have so much crap on this table, it's unbelievable. So we talk about different ways to apply size or the, the medium over the size. This board has been painted with a coat of crackle medium, or crackle size. Sorry folks, I just, I know what I'm talking about, but I'm thinking about my next step so the words get caught when I'm trying to give directions. It's not you, it's absolutely me. So, I took some of this crackle size, rolled it on the board, and I taped off the sections because I want you to see two different application methods. So the first one is, where did I put it? The crystal clear crackle, and I, I mixed some mica powders into here to get to this color. And we're just gonna brush it on. And when you brush, it cracks in the direction that you brush. And the nice thing is you have some pl uh, plenty of um, work time with these products. They're very, very user friendly. And actually, this crackle is working on something for, uh, I'm using it on another project. So that's why I have this weird purple iridescent color. So I brushed this on. And if I wanted even more linear kind of cracking showing up, I would have brushed the size on as well instead of rolling it. These I rolled. So this is going to crack this way. Another fun way to apply crackle. I'm going to have to go grab a glove. Hang on a second. Otherwise I'm going to make a hell of a mess. Glove. Where's my I had left them in the back when I grabbed them for the front. So the other way to apply is with 
grocery store bags. Now, make sure you turn your grocery store bag inside out. Why? Because if you don't, the ink will dissolve in the product and you will have whatever this bag said. I think this one says CVS on it. This side, I'm gonna take it and smear it and pounce it. I may be running out of my product because <laughs> I used a lot of it today. So I've mixed crystal clear crackle with mica pigments or with mica powder and I'm rolling it. And this one, I'm just taking my grocery store bag and pouncing it. And this is going to give me a kind of very cool shattered effect. And you can see the difference in the application. You see that one versus that one. All right, let's see what everybody's saying. Uh, Inga, step one, size. Step two, crackle medium. Yes, that is correct. Anna, nice to see you here. Okay, always have a glove on because when you do this kind of pouncing thing, it, I've had it go up to my elbows, even wearing gloves. So I'm going to set that aside and hopefully we will see some of that cracking later. Now, I have two more boards that I wanted to show you because I'm trying to keep my uh, lives shorter and sweeter. Nobody leaves to listen to me yammer for an hour and a half. So hang on just a second. They're right over there. I got to grab them. It's summertime. Everything's hot and humid. So <laughs> sometimes we're fighting humidity on getting things dry. I cannot promise how fast anything's drying today, just like I couldn't yesterday. So I also know that sometimes you want to crack a pattern in plasters or into your finish. So there's two ways of doing that. And if you look at this board, you can see on this side, I rolled my size through a stencil. So when I trowel the urban crackle over it, or any crackle, either the crystal clear or the urban, but I'm doing the urban with this today, it's going to crack over the flowers and not crack here. This one, if you look at it, you can see there's a pattern in here. What I did is I rolled the size behind it and then I double rolled through the flower pattern. So I'm going to have heavier cracking in the flowers on this side than I would on the background. Now I have a sample board that I did that in. <laughs> it's not dry yet. It's still drying. You can see it's starting to crack. You just can't see it's cracking on the designs yet. Although it's starting. Oh my gosh. Sherry, nice to see you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you exactly how I troweled over this and then I'm gonna answer any questions you might have because I just can't make things dry faster. I'm trying. Maybe I should just stand there and blow on it, but you know, that might make it crack in very weird ways because I had garlic for lunch. So let me go get the crackle. Urban Crackle, yay. This is the Urban Crackle. As I showed you yesterday, oops, my trowel went to the back because I washed it. been doing so much stuff today every time I swear I put something in front of me I put it somewhere else Oy. okay so this is the urban crackle and again I can tint it I can do whatever I want but I don't think you all want to sit here and watch me mix tint so I'm just going to take it out as it is butter my trowel with now you don't have to use trowels 
Trials are just a tool that makes it easier. Um, I carry and sell very, very small trowels so that they're great for furniture. These big ones are a little hard unless you're working on a large surface. Hey Rhonda, nice to see you. All right, so I'm just gonna trowel over the whole surface. And what I want, you, the most important thing you have to remember is I'm not scraping, I'm buttering. Um, because if I scrape, I might break the surface tension of the crackle and I'd lose all the crackle and the pattern and everything I created in here. So I'm just smoothing it down. Um, these are studio trowels, so there's always a little bit of crud on the edges, no matter how hard I clean them because they get beat up in the studio. So that's gonna dry. And wherever I put this on here thinner, it's going to crack finer. Wherever I put it on heavier, it's gonna crack with larger cracks, even in that patterning. So I'm moving it. And once again, the awesome thing with this product, with both the Urban Crackle and the Crystal Clear Crackle, is it's not like the crackles we all got in the craft stores or we got used to years ago. You can work your plasters and stuff on this a bit. You don't have to just brush it down and hope you got it on right and because it cracks immediately. You have work time with this, which anybody knows on these things, it is vital to be able to manipulate your product a little bit to get the finish you want. Now this can be do done on tabletops, cabinetry, table legs, counters, all kinds of things. There is no limit to where you can crack except where somebody lets you. You know, there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> well, I have a lot of cracks in my house that have nothing to do with me. <laughs> it's an old house, so things crack. So as you can see, I'm just buttering, just smoothing. And I'm probably going to have to post pictures of how this all came out tomorrow because it won't dry fast enough. See if I'm getting, showing any crackle in here that you all can see in any of these. They are starting to crackle. If you look close, you can see it's starting to pull apart. I kind of love iridescent purple over black. And let's see, where's the other one? It is... It's starting to crack, it's starting to show the patterns, but it's really hard to see it because it's still so wet in the center. Hey Heather, oh my God, hey hot stuff. Yeah, it is hot here. That's why I'm not wearing anything other than my sundress and an apron. Once again, nobody's naked and painting in the studio in their underwear simply because it's a public studio. I have, and I will own up to it. I have painted in my underwear before in my own private studio. Thank God nobody ever sees that the stuff. Okay, everybody. I also have to thank everyone. The yesterday's live got more shares and more views and more reactions to it than I ever had on a Facebook Live. Um, and I gotta thank you all. You guys, this is the reason I'm doing this. It's for everybody here, and I have to, have to, have to, have to thank you for everything you've done. I continue to ask you to spread the word, share the video, create a watch party, do anything you want to do. I would love to have more, the more reach I have, the more opportunities I have to um, teach people all these fun products, do contests, stuff like that. So. I'm asking everybody to use the big S word. You all know what it is because Facebook still has issues with me saying it too many times. Um, and I will post all the products. And tomorrow when all of this is dry, I will post all the finished pictures so everybody can see what things turned out to be. Sorry I couldn't show you the crackling over the pattern completed. It wouldn't do it for me. It wouldn't dry. Huh. I might have a meltdown myself about things not dry. Anyway, 
Have a wonderful afternoon, everybody. Don't hesitate to ask any questions. If I don't answer your questions here in a live, post it in the thread below once it's on Facebook. I will answer anything. And you know you can always get me. You know I always, always try to answer questions. So have a great day. All these products that I've been using are available on paintedstudio.com. Love to sell them to you. But more than anything, I just want you all to be successful in your painting projects. So have a great afternoon, everyone. Bye.